Hello everybody, I am with Paul today. Um, I've come up on a trek to... Paul, where am I? You are in street near Glastonbury. So. Near Glastonbury. I've not brought a tent. But um, <laughs> I've had the opportunity to chat to Paul twice. One in person and mm. one over a video call. And I think he's got some really useful stuff that he's helping businesses with. So I thought I'd come up. Actually, I'll tell you the truth. He came to us... And I forgot I was in the wrong place because I was totally disorganised and had to beg for forgiveness. But uh, he's given me an audience, a royal audience. So, <laughs> Paul, kind. tell everybody what you do and how long you've been doing it and all that stuff. Okay. Um, my primary focus at the moment is very much helping people put together a simple presentation, which they can use either direct from stage to an audience or across a web class, a webinar type approach which really educates people and moves them down that path to buying your products or your services. So in a nutshell, what I do is help people influence more effectively, more easily. And in a way, I think the big thing as well is in a way where when you finish delivering your webinar, people want to hear more from you. So I think we've seen, obviously, yeah. and you and I have both been on webinars yeah. where at the end of it, you go, well, that was 90 minutes of my life. I'm never getting back. What was the point of that? And it was like zero real content. Mm -hmm. And it was all pitch, 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 which I get everybody yeah. needs to sell their services, of course. But when it's all pitch and no value as an investment of your yeah. personal time, you kind of go like, well, what, what was that about really? And then when you get a follow up from it, it's like, well, I don't want to hear from you because you just wasted my time. Okay, so so let me let me ask you, and I don't know if this is a tricky question. I've seen you do this. You give mm. away a lot of stuff. Mm. Yeah, and lots of people, they give away tons and tons of stuff. Yeah. How how do you manage that balance? Or even if, even if is this a relevant question, how do you manage that balance between giving away enough stuff mm. to show people you're worth the investment, yeah. but not giving away the crown jewels that they go, thank you very much, and I'm, I'm on with it? Yeah, there is, actually, there is a balance, because you can, like, I'll, I'll happily give away the farm in terms of content. Yeah. The question then really is, how do you give away the farm? Because if I just gave everybody everything that's in my head as a download, it would be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So then there would be that that disconnect. Whenever, whenever you want to influence anybody to, to do something, particularly obviously in a business setting, then you've got to understand that what's going through the head are a number of simple questions. One of which is, can I do this? Yeah. So if you just give away everything you know that you're an expert in, one if it's just dumped on them, they're going to be overwhelmed and they're just immediately going to go, well, that was great in the sense of you were so willing to give, yeah. but I don't think I'll ever be able to do it. I don't believe I'll ever be able to do it. So then they just go looking for another path. Does that make sense? It's interesting you yeah. say the word believe because mm. I've, I've mentioned this in some things on LinkedIn recently. What? How do you think that whole belief you know, we've got marketing, we've got sales. Mm, mm. How does that belief word fit with marketing and sales and presentations? Because surely it's just facts, isn't it? Don't you just deliver facts? You do. But if we were all robots, that would probably be accurate. But as we're human beings, and human yeah. beings are emotional creatures, we're not logical, we're not, uh, we're not Mr. Spock, you know, off Star Trek, we're not Vulcans, we are very emotional. And that's what drives our actions, our behaviours. So therefore, the beliefs that we form throughout life have an impact on our behavior, obviously. It's like, it's like, interestingly enough, you know, you and I are sat here, small business owners, um, doing well, and yet we both know people who have started in business and have maybe hit a ceiling financially yeah. where they're probably not making much more than they would have made working in corporate. Yeah. I mean, they've got more freedom maybe, yeah. which they want, but they're not necessarily making more financially. And it's like, what's stopping them getting through that that breaking through that barrier yeah. it's all belief it's the emotional aspect in the same way that you know I, i've got friends who are making 10 20 30 40 million a year in this sort of seminar world and you kind of go well that's great it's fantastic it's way above average because mm -hmm. most people who are doing a good running a good seminar business in the uk probably doing somewhere between one and three million turnover so somebody doing 10 20 30 is breaking the norm there yeah but what's the difference and then i've got one friend who's you know he's in the billions you know, so again, what's the difference? Mm -hmm. And yes, without a doubt, there's strategy, there's things that you would call hard facts, but the implementation of those are all belief driven. Mm. So whether somebody bothers to do it or not is belief driven. And, and I suppose that's the same, whether you're an employee, whether you're a business owner, if, if 
it's a bit like a company saying, you know, we've got this brand new campaign mm. or this brand new strategy we're going to implement. If people don't believe it's going to make a difference, they're not going to. They're do not it. going to do it, or they're going to do it half-heartedly. In which case, it's not going to work anyway because they're not giving it the focus it needs. So, and you see that all the time. It's like if you, like a lot of the people we work with, have come into whatever they do, maybe driven by a passion to make a difference. Mm -hmm. So they've become coaches and got the skills necessary to do great coaching. Then, from a business perspective that ability to influence is going to determine whether you have clients or not. Yeah. But if we come along and say, okay, in order to do this effectively, you're going to have to spend the next 10 years reading every direct marketing book that's ever been written, going on every marketing program that exists in the world, and then out of all of that, develop your own strategy and your own plan. And it's seriously, it's going to take you 10, 15 years. Most people are like, forget it, I'm not doing it. Yeah. You know, because it's too much. So if we then put some together, part of our skill is to be able to put something across in a way which is almost step by step mm -hmm. so people understand it and believe they can do it. That makes sense. And then I guess the other side of tying that in with your question is, can somebody believe they can do it and therefore not need you or me yeah. to help them do it? That's possible. But more often than not, what I've noticed is if I give a people a step by step approach, so now they believe they can do it, which I want them to believe. Yeah. Because I want them to believe they can do this, do it successfully, get the result they want because that's the result they want. And then I'll let them go away and do it for themselves. There's maybe one in a thousand people that will get or actually do it by themselves. And everybody else will kind of get to a point where they go, you know what, I do need some help with this. And then, of course, that's where they'll then come back yeah. and say, look, you showed me this. This is your formula, your plan, your approach. So you must be the person that can therefore help me so, do it. So in one sense, what you're, what you're saying is because you've developed something that you know can work. Yeah. You, you, you you know how this can go wrong. Mm. You know how this can fail. Yeah. And then by people bolting into you, even though you've given them mm. the kind of almost like the template. Yeah, yeah. You you are the person who makes sure that they don't fall off and go into the rabbit warrens that you know are there. Yeah, absolutely. So you've because I've seen the mistakes. It's like like for example, I was in um, Chicago the last week, and I was at a two day event. And I watched, it was a multi-speaker, so I watched all the other speakers. And I'm there making notes on all the other speakers. And more interestingly, I then sat in the audience and went around and spoke to people and asked them what they did. And at some point in the conversation, I asked them about the speakers and what they thought and what they got from it. And two things came out of it. One, interestingly, was the speakers that had given more real content were the ones they liked the best because yeah. they were like, I've got something real. And the other side of it was, it was like, are you going to do it? Well, I don't know, not necessarily on my own. They wanted guidance. They mm -hmm. wanted help because it's like these people have seen the mistakes, the pitfalls, the challenges, the things that can go wrong. I guess it's a bit like I was sat in the airport yesterday at O'Hara Airport and I'm sat there waiting for my flight and um, I plugged, in, plugged my phone in and I'm watching a Graham Norton show on YouTube. Yeah. And Jamie Oliver was on. Okay. And it was an old show, so it was a Christmas show. And Jamie Oliver was plugging his latest Christmas book. So it's like all these, like a book like this, you know, and it's full of Christmas recipes. So I know I could buy Jamie Oliver's book. Mm -hmm. I know I could follow the recipe. Is it going to be as good as Jamie Oliver doing it? Not a chance. Yeah. Not a chance. And there's a very good chance of whatever recipe I follow, when it comes out the oven, it's going to look nothing like the picture or taste nothing like it's mm -hmm. supposed to taste like because I don't know the things to avoid or the little nuances that actually make it deliver the result better. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that's part of it. It's like, yes, I can give away a certain amount. If I give away information in a non-structured way and I give everybody everything, they'll be overwhelmed and they'll go, I can't do this, and they'll go yeah. looking for something else. If I put it across in a step-by-step -step structured way, which you should, by the way, in your presentation, make it step-by-step, -step, then I can give a huge amount of value so they actually have things they could do straight away. Mm -hmm. And I think that's building a relationship with people. Yeah. So I think that's important. And I also know there's going to be a strong percentage of people who will maybe go away look at it, give it a whirl, and kind of go, oh, and maybe get so far and then go, oh, I'm not really sure now, or not necessarily get the, it comes out the oven, it doesn't look like the picture, yeah. I don't know what's missing, and then they'll come back and talk. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so everybody wins in my, I, my I'm opinion. I'm going to ask you a tricky question. Well, it might not be a tricky question, mm. but it, it, it comes back to what you've said. So there's a variety of ways that people make presentations. Sure. There's there's the presentation of the webinar. Yeah. Uh, there's the presentation of a on stage. Mm. There's the presentation in front of a boardroom. You know, like yeah, a yeah, yeah. table here. Yeah, absolutely. Could, yeah. What do you think, without giving 
mm. too much away. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. What do you think are the key things that you see time and time again people miss? Um, I would say they miss understanding what influence really is from a big picture point of view. Mm -hmm. So they may dump a load of facts on people and facts are great. They can support a great compelling case, but they are never a compelling case on right because mm -hmm. we're emotional creatures. Yeah. So if you just give dry facts, it's like we're dry facts. And I've seen presenters do that, you know, so and they because they themselves are very analytically driven, they assume everybody else is. And it's like, no, they're not. So it's just dry facts. So people miss that. They forget that it's the emotional aspect which is more important okay. than the actual facts and figures themselves. That's the other big thing. And then they forget that actually you're here to influence someone else. So it should be about that person and their goals, what they want to achieve, not about you. So I see too much of I, I, I. I yeah. do this, I do this, I do the other. It's, like it's nothing to do with you. It's like what is your client, whether yeah. it's a boardroom and they're your stakeholders, or it's, you know, you're actually on a, in front of an audience who you want to come and work with you because you know you can help them, whatever it may be. It's like, it's about them. So what are their fears? Yeah. What are their goals? And how does what you deliver tie into helping them get beyond their fears and achieve their goals? So would you say that people buy into, you know, everybody's, when you're selling something, whatever you're selling mm. or promoting, you know, I, I I use the word selling a lot, but yeah. a lot of the time people get... They don't like the word. the word, yeah. The words matter. But, yeah. you know, if you're promoting something yes. and you want somebody to take an action... Yes. Sales. Yeah, you want yeah, somebody yeah. to take an action. Yeah. What do you think about... Do you think... I I'm ob obviously talk about a lot about the outcome. People want an outcome. Yes. And then belief. You know, getting people to believe, one, they can achieve that. And, yes. And two, that... Um, you, well, one they can do it, yeah. and one what they're being told to do actually works. Yes. There's two elements yes. of belief, and there's yeah. an outcome. Yes. How do you, how do you see, like for an, I'm I'm trying to explain something really complicated. It sounds great in my head, <laughs> but you've got a business, a business owner, a coach, a consultant, yeah. and they yeah. go, I want people to get our consulting services. Yes. Who are they buying into? Are they buying into the business or the person in front of them? In the nature of this kind of business, coaching, consulting, they're buying into the person in front of them. And let you can go another level. And this is where, like, if you're just starting out and you're building your business and you're getting to your first six figures a year, it's all about you. They're buying into you. If you want to get to a couple of million a year, you can still do it where they're buying into you. If you want to get beyond that, then they're buying into the brand of you and the process that you deliver. Mm -hmm. So then it becomes about your formula, your <laughs> recipe. So you want people to believe in the formula. Like Stephen Covey's Seven yeah. Habits. Yeah. It's like Stephen Covey's passed on, gone to the next journey. But his process, his seven habits still exist. Yeah. And people can still buy into that and follow it and use that model and get a great result. So there's an element of both. There's the yeah. belief in the process. But certainly in the beginning, if it's just you, there's got to be a belief in you. Because there's a, here's my formula I can deliver it in a way where it's like, okay, people go, I, 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 this will work for me. I can do this. More importantly, I can do this with your help is what mm -hmm. I really want because then they need to believe that I can help them get that result. Does that make sense? Because mm -hmm. if they go, well, this is a great formula, but I don't believe you can get me that result that I want, they're never going to buy from you, which is really comes down to your personal credibility. Yeah. yeah. So do you think every business is selling a formula to an outcome? I think if you turn, if you think of it as turning your knowledge into a formula, you will find it so much easier to sell. Mm -hmm. That's the point. Like I, I can look back over the last couple of days and go, who were the speakers that, like bottom line, I went and asked, who, what sales did everybody do? Because I'm interested in the result. Yeah. And I can absolutely tell you there's a direct correlation between the speakers who took their knowledge and put it into a step-by-step -step process and who made the most money. They did. Yeah. Everyone else who was just kind of talking and throwing concepts and ideas at the audience might did okay, maybe. Some of them didn't do very well. Did okay, but the ones that managed to say, this is the step-by-step -step I take you through, they were the ones that got the biggest sales results. Okay. Always. And do you think you, in, your, in what you do, mm. do you train people and show people how to do it without that pushy element or manipulation and all that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. If you put together a, a good presentation, and I've, I've, I've been doing this for 20 years, so I've seen the shift in the marketplace over that time. So 20 years ago, 
that what you've just described as that kind of pushy, pushy, hard sell yeah. was much more common. Not to say that it isn't common today, yeah. it is. But it was much more, because it was new. Certainly in the UK, it was new. So people kind of were like, they were okay with it. Does that make yeah. sense? It's like, they kind of were, there was there was people even at that time saying, this all seems a bit American. <laughs> it all seems a bit too pushy, pushy. Um, and what was interesting was, you know, my team at the back of the room was saying, so do you not want it? Oh, no, no, I want it. So they're still, do you know what I mean? They're like, they're like so this sounds all sounds a bit American and pushy, pushy, but I want the result and yeah. I want the process and I believe Paul can get it for me. So therefore they were buying. Today, you've now got much more multi-speaker events. Mm -hmm. So you've got a promoter who wants their money today because obviously there's a lot of money to put on an event. It costs yeah. a lot of money. So they have a speaker who will come in and there'll be some sort of either 50-50 type split. So the speaker's got to make sales right now. So they follow that formula where they end up being very pushy, pushy at the end to get people to buy. Of course, if you're in the audience for two days, one speaker, next speaker, next speaker, next speaker, and they're all pitching. Yeah. Everybody gets like, oh, my God, not another one. Mm. You know, so everyone gets sick of that. And even now, if you like we talked about before, if you go on a webinar and it's just pitch, 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 it's like, what a waste of my time. Mm. Like I didn't get anything from it. So things have shifted. So coming back to that, you don't need to be pushy, pushy to get the result yeah. at all. Because there's a shift. There's been a shift in how people think. But if you do, from my point of view, I structure it in terms of three chunks. The opening, the model in the mi middle, your step-by-step, -step, and then the actual offer at the end. So you still want to make an offer, obviously. Yeah. But the view, the opening is actually the most important part. The close, the offer at the end, is the least important part. And if you didn't need the other two pieces, you could just say, here's my offer, and that'd be it. But if you get the opening right, mm. then you will get better results at the end. And more importantly, if you get the opening right and you get your model right, your actual knowledge step by step right, then even if someone says, I'm not ready for this now, they still have formed a bond with you because they genuinely know you want to help them, which you do, I hope. <laughs> so then, so then, of course, when they see your email next month or next year yeah. and they go, I'm ready now, you're the person they turn to. But if you just follow the old formula, which some people do follow, and in my opinion, they're wrong, they need to move on, where it's just hardly any content, if any, real content, and then pitch, 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 then yes, some people will buy today. What you don't hear as well, by the way, is you may get more people buy today and more refunds tomorrow. Yeah. Because people wake up and go, what the hell did I do? Yeah. Because there was no real value in it. Mm. So then they start questioning if they made the right decision. So it's a lose-lose. But if you've done it that way, you get more, maybe people buy now, but the people who didn't buy, they don't really want to hear from you. And do you think, um, I've seen the way you structure your presentations, so mm. I know that they really do work. Mm. And um, in your presentations, that first, it's almost like the first two thirds mm. of the presentation are structured to give value, demonstrate credibility yeah. and belief. Yes. So at the end, yes, you have to tell people you've got an offer, but the offer already almost sells itself in that sense. Yeah, yeah, to a great extent. Because at that point, you're going, look, you should have got a lot of value from this. That's my goal. And do you want to go further? Do you want my help to get to the result faster? Mm -hmm. Then obviously then there's a benefit to us working together. So at that point, yeah, it should be easy. They should be waiting for it. My goal is if you've got the first two pieces right, by the time you get to the offer, the audience, your audience, whether it's web class or mm -hmm. live, they want to hear the offer. Yeah. They're going, actually, I'm really excited. I'd love to be able to work with you. Yeah. I want the offer. The other way, as a philosophy, and if you're a coach, you'll understand this. What is coaching really about? Coaching is about mindset change so that you change someone's behavior. Yeah. Here's the result you want. Here's the actions you need to take. Like if you want the chocolate cake, you got to mix the ingredients. Yeah. So if you're going, I don't want to mix it. I'm, I'm afraid of chocolate. I don't want to mix the chocolate cake. Then you're never going to get the cake. So therefore, what is a presentation really? In my opinion, it's coaching. Because my goal is behavior change so that you get moving down the right path to the goal you want. Because you're sat there going, well, I want a successful business. Great, these are things you got to do. And if you haven't done them in the past for whatever reason, fear-based or not a clear understanding of what you need to do, my goal is here's the knowledge you need because you do need it. Yeah. And here's the belief to get you to take the action. Because mm -hmm. without taking the action, are you going to get the result? Of course not. So, so let me spin this round and add a bit of my world in here. Okay. Um, so 
often I see clients and what they're doing is they really want sales. Yes. Yeah, as we all do, yeah. we all want to yeah. grow our business. But they're so obsessed with it, they kind of blow their brains away. Yeah. Yeah. And they're spending money on social media advertising and all this kind of stuff mm. and wondering why it's not working. And then what they do is they hire somebody in to try and make it better. Yeah. But I find that when you dig deep, the actual offer, the premise of what they're offering yeah. is is lame. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you see think that's a problem in the like like the coaching consulting world? Completely. Yeah. It's if you're if you are a coach, there's a good chance that when you decided you wanted to become a coach, you went and did either some sort of NLP course, for example, or you went and did a specific coaching course. Yeah. In other words, you went. I need the skills in order to be able to coach effectively. So you went and got them. That yeah. makes sense. Or if you said to me, I want to learn Chinese, then I pretty much guarantee your first next thought is going to be, where do I get Chinese lessons? Yeah. But what's really interesting is, and we've all done this, you come into business and you go, it's common sense. It's like, I've got, I've got this, I'm a coach, I've got this set of skills, therefore people will buy it. Or, you know, I've got this software, people will buy it. It's like, there's this disconnect between there's a set of skills required to grow a business. Yeah. It's just completely forgotten about. It doesn't enter most people's awareness. They just go, well, I'm a coach or I'm a consultant. That's it. That's all I really need. There is nothing else. The actual business aspect, common sense. I'll just get on with it. And it's, it's a common misconception. It gets in the way. Mm. And it gets in the way, one, because it's a misconception. Secondly, because if you genuinely believe that business is common sense, you don't even go looking for the skills. So it really gets in the way then. Yeah. So then you'll see people, and the, you must have spoken to people like this. So the number of coaches I've spoken to who came into coaching, oftentimes because they wanted to get out of corporate, they wanted to do something where they felt they were making a difference, understandable, yeah. and they got a certain amount of savings. So they'd taken some of their savings to get the skills for coaching, and then they've gone, right, I'm in business. Get a website, spend some more money. Get on LinkedIn, maybe take the free version, that's fine. And then start posting stuff, stuff, random, no connection yeah. to anything. And then a month goes by, well, I've got to pay the mortgage, I've got to feed my family, so more money out of the savings. Another month goes, and so on. Until eventually, they're running out of savings, or they run out of savings. Yeah. And then they start thinking, oh, I need help. Because now the pain is so strong, they're going, I must be missing something. So now all of a sudden, they start to dawn on them, actually, there is a skill set to this that I'm yeah. missing, where do I get it? And, and they, that's when they turn to... They've got to communicate to their potential customers in a way that the customer, one, wants to listen. Yes. And two, yes. see, like we come, we're coming back to it again, but the value I deliver to somebody, mm. I have to not only just tell people the value, sure. they have to understand the value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I, I put a quote up. I don't know who did it. I put it on LinkedIn a few days ago. And it was the message that is sent is that the same as the message that's received? Mm. And often, you know, we write our web copy, we write all this stuff. And I've done this, I've I'm sure you've done, you troll through websites and you look at somebody's website and you go, I have no idea what these guys do. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. It's like full of waffle yes. and yes. all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And actually, when it comes down to it, it's we're data scientists or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm a firm believer, and I'd love to hear what you think about this, is that if you can't quickly articulate to somebody the value you can deliver and mm. the problem you can solve for them, yep. you're wasting your time. Yeah, yeah, totally. Which, actually, yeah, I kind of, I guess, got went off tangent, didn't I? I forgot what your original question was, which was about the offer itself. I can't remember what my original well, it, it's question was. Like the, the offer was lame. It's like, yeah. that's what you were saying. It's like, absolutely. And that I think it's understanding that people don't, don't know what you do, don't understand it at the level you do, because you're the expert, not them. And then also those other things get in the way. So in any kind of sales situation, there's always the common objections of I don't have the time and I don't have the money. And you need to deal with those in your presentation. But the offer itself should articulate very clearly what they are getting, why they need it, and connected to that result or that outcome, as you yeah. call it. So it's like, like, here's what I'm giving you. These are the pieces of my recipe, and you need these in order to achieve this result. And there's a very clear understanding of why that's needed. 
So not just me telling you, mm -hmm. you need this. Like, like if you were selling a podcasting course, you say, yeah. okay, you need a microphone. So part of my offer is this microphone. You need a microphone in order to be able to pick up the wave voice signals yeah. and put them in a computer so we can record it and hand it to somebody else. Oh, I get it. Now I know I need a microphone. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's that element of what are all the pieces of your offer? And most people, I think, haven't even thought in that way. Like coaching, they go, well, well I coach. And? What does that mean? What does that mean in terms of a result? And what is it you actually do in that coaching that delivers that result, yeah. that's important to delivering that result? Do you think a lot of like coaches, whether it be you know a personal coach mm. of some kind or a business coach, yeah. how much of it is about the structure that they've built? Like for an example, we, you do a webinar, that's yeah. great. You yeah. get people listening to you. Yeah. You've got an offer. Mm -hmm. But how good, not not how good that offer, how structured that offer is. Yeah. Like, for an example, a lot of coaches, coaches they wander around. Mm. I, I, they'll probably upset some people. With <laughs> yeah, probably. They wander around going to events, and yeah. there's nothing wrong with networking sure. or anything like that. But they go around, I, I, I do coaching sessions. Yeah. And it's like, and? And? For who? <laughs> <laughs> for what purpose? <laughs> yeah. I, it's like, actually, I'd rather have your business card that says, I can help you do this, this, yes. this, and this. Yes. Book a session, here's the de details. Do you think that kind of structure is essential today? Totally. If, if, you think, if you think of influence as being the ability to plant pictures, yeah. and you say, I do coaching, there's no picture. There's nothing in my head that's clear as to what that means. Unless they've had a previous experience, in which case you're aligning yourself with whatever With that they, previous, yeah. which may have been bad. If yep. they had a previous bad experience with a coach and you come and say, I do coaching, then they remember that old bad experience, yep. whereas you want them to have a very positive experience or a positive view of what you're offering. So if you therefore, you've got to break it down to be able to plant those pictures, mm -hmm. which is really a way of taking what may be, for a lot of people, a complicated topic, and you've got to make it simple, which is why the whole encouragement of make it step by step. So when you speak to somebody and they say, yes, I coach, and I'll do this naturally now. I'll say, okay, so who do you coach? What kind of result are they expecting to get from you? You know, how do you coach? Have you ever met a coach who can't answer those questions? Oh, yeah, all of them. All of them? Because <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll say everybody. Like, no, you don't. <laughs> and the result that, is that's true of whatever the well. client wants. Yeah. Okay, that sounds nice and wonderful, but that isn't going to get you that, any business. That sounds like a coach who's run out of savings. Yes. <laughs> Usually. Yeah. Um, so, so... Let me throw this back to you because mm. you've said this about coaches and this is completely unscripted, by the way. So Paul has no idea. I have no idea what I'm going to say next. Really. The outcome wasn't to offend everybody. It's just worked <laughs> out that way. Yeah. Um, what's the outcome you deliver for people? So I deliver the I deliver for them that presentation. So it's like not I don't write it for them. We work together, but they end up with a presentation which they can then put in front of their ideal client, mm -hmm. which is not necessarily based on demographic age and such like, but it's based on the result people want and the problems they're facing. Yeah. So they can articulate that problem, articulate that result, and then there's a presentation which guides that person from never having heard of you to understanding what you do, totally believing in your credibility to deliver that result, and then also totally believing in your process to get that result. And that one presentation is all you need to build any kind of seven-figure business, and certainly you, in coaching And do you consulting. give them pushback when they come with wishy-washy answers? Totally, yeah, because they're not going to... Because from my point of view, and I think all businesses should think this way, I don't know if they do, but the end goal is raving fan clients. Yeah. Not how much money I make, it's I want raving fan clients. Because if I get that right, then the money and everything else should, should take care of itself. So if I focus on that, then if they come with wishy-washy anything... It's like, I'm going to say, that doesn't, that's not going to work. Yeah. So we need to be able to clearly define who do you really want to work with, what result are you going to get for them or help them get, and what problems are you going to help them solve. And if you don't know what those are, then the first step is to go find out what those are, well, which first, is why you need to talk I, to them. I do that bit, you do the second bit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, think, I, I don't think this is a coaching specific issue actually i think no coaching consulting speakers yeah all of that i've met yeah. i've met some companies for an example where uh, well i'll give you one example a, a technical you know coding oh, yeah. kind of software company yeah absolutely incredible what they can do yeah, yeah but when you actually start to talk to them because they can do so much mm. 
they can't define themselves in it. Yes. No, no, they yes. can define themselves, but they don't want to because of a fear of losing. Of losing or missing out, yeah. yes. So yes. if I go for this group of people, what about all of them over there? Yes. Yet they forget that, that actually now they've become so relevant to the people that we're actually talking to that they're more likely that those people will buy mm -hmm. and get engaged with you, even if some of those people you may may not be on the radar. The other one I've seen is people hitting every social channel. Yes. With everything they've got and not really and this comes to my world, how I you know, LinkedIn's become my world. Um I do all the others, but they're you know, it's like LinkedIn and, and everything else yes, is here. Yes. Um they never master one one channel. Yes. They never develop one space. Yeah. So they, they're they're spread so thin and I think this comes back to focus, and I don't know whether you're a coach, you're a consultant, you're a, a you know a, a million turnover business. Mm. If you don't have focus, you are in real trouble. You're totally in trouble. And so the focus in in the coaching, consulting, speaking world, focus is who are you working with. You've got to be very clear who that is. It isn't everybody. <laughs> the other side is it's like there's what two, three billion people online at the moment. Yeah. There's another three billion coming online in the next five, six years. So that's six billion people. Do you really think you like all six billion people or they're all going to like you? No. Mm. So why would you can't work with everybody anyway? It's just not physically possible. So within that, you've got to be clear who it is you are working with. Like for me, if I've got an audience of people who are entrepreneurial, ambitious, run their own business, want to grow it, want to make a bigger impact, great. We're a great fit in that respect. Yeah. If I'm sat in an audience full of school teachers, it's going to be the worst presentation they've ever heard because I'm the wrong fit yeah. for them completely. I also know from experience, there are people that I've worked with in a mentoring coaching environment where they've gone actually within the first weeks, they've gone, this, this doesn't work as a relationship for me because I'm too driven. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, I want them to get a result and they're suddenly going, actually, this is too much for me and I need somebody who's more softly, softly. Great, go find someone who's more softly, softly. And that they probably a better relationship for them. But I'm kind of a, I'm not going to, sugarcoat anything it's like this is what needs to happen this is when it needs to happen and if you don't hand your homework in on time you get detention simple as that it's like you you've got to get it done so that's how i am so yes you need to be clear who it is you need to be clear what you're offering and if you've got if you can do so many different things that's great then let's organize that into some sort of ladder yeah so you can kind of lead with something which gets those people that you want to work with into your circle of influence. Yeah. And then when they got the value from that, if you can then say, well, there's even more value with this, and then some of those people want to come on that journey further with you. But they can't do that if you're going, well, I can do anything for anybody and anything for anybody so, that you never get anywhere. So I'm going to ask one more controversial question just to alienate and isolate the audience a little bit further. <laughs> more, yeah. um, have you ever come across, I've come across this and maybe you have, a business or person or individual who goes, my way isn't working. I don't want to change my way, make my way work. Have you ever come across people like that or businesses like that? I have, not for a long time. Um, and only because I have a set of questions. Yeah. And if you, if whatever, depending on your answers to the questions, depends whether I want to work with you or not. Because I already know from the patterns I've seen in the past, yeah. these are the people I can get great results for. These are the people it's going to be very hard to get results for because they're so fixed in their old way. Yeah. You know, it's like you wouldn't go to a doctor and say, doctor, I'm, I'm having a problem. I've got chest pain or whatever it might be. And they go, okay, I know what it is. So they've done a great diagnosis. Here's what you need to do. You need to change your approach. And they go, no, I don't want to do that. Or, you know, I want to lose weight. Great. So you go and see some of this. They're like, to lose weight, we're going to need to get you to exercise more, cut out the chocolate cake, eat more real food without processed food and such. Like, they go, no, I don't want to do that. I want to carry on eating my, you know, Marks and Spencers or eating at Denny's or wherever it might be. And I want to carry on eating chocolate cake for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Followed with, you know, a have two litre bottle of Coke. Me and, my doctor. <laughs> <laughs> and and expecting to get the result. You're not going to get the result. No. So they've got to be willing to change their approach. I mean, that's, that's a standard one, though, isn't it? If, if you've done any NLP, you'll have seen the ultimate success formula. Yeah. Or if you've seen Tony Robbins, you'll have seen the ultimate success formula. And it's know your outcome, know why you want it, the emotional aspect, and then obviously take action, watch your plan, get on with it, and then get feedback. And then the fifth step, if it's not working change your approach. Mm.
Because if it's not working, it isn't going to deliver the result. Yeah, but just because you want it some to. Some people just keep doing the same things yeah. over and over again. But then again. you're back to Einstein's thing, isn't it? Like insanity, yeah. doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Yeah. It's not going to work. But at what point, because if they're adamant they want to follow that, then I guess there's a couple of ways with it, isn't it? There's either we can look to see, to reframe it, influence them in a way to make them realize that actually it's never going to work. Yeah. Or say, well, let's put your approach up with my approach. We'll do both and then we'll test the result. Is that fair? It's like, which is more important, getting the result or staying attached to your current approach? Or you go, well, that's great. You stay with your current approach. Come and talk to me when you've run out of cash. Or don't because you can't afford to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Paul, this has been, you know, every time we meet, I love getting your perspective on stuff because you've seen you. it. You've probably experienced some of the things that people have gone through. You've, yeah. probably, you've I'm sure you've learned some of these things from experience mm. and you've also learned from it studying and you do still commit to studying. Oh, some yeah, always, always. Like, I know it's a, a cliched phrase, but I don't want to be the smartest person in the room. Like, I, there's always something to learn. Yeah. You know, and even this last week being over in, in Chicago, massive amounts for me to learn at the same time from people who are starting out at another level. There's always something to learn if you go with that approach of, I want to learn something which helps me enhance the result I've got or broaden the result I've got, like in some way, there's some value in there. So yeah, yeah. I always I always want to learn. So I always study. But yeah, the, I was fortunate in the sense of when I started out, I had I had hired an office in Leicester Square, which was a complete mistake. I knew nothing about business, shouldn't have done it. But with then, the savings. With the savings, <laughs> yeah. Because like, you know, I thought Leicester Square, great address, that must be important. If people know I've got an office in Leicester Square, they'll come flooding. It's like, yeah, yeah, right. So I had that. And very quickly, I realized the phone wasn't going to ring by itself. Clients weren't going to walk in the door by themselves. So I ran an advert, spent a couple of thousand pounds on an advert in the London Evening Standard, invited people to see to a presentation. They came along Tuesday evening for the presentation. I delivered a two and a half hour presentation. At the end of it, I said, I'm doing this seminar. This is how much it costs. Sign up at the back. Nobody bought. So I had a very immediate feedback of, your approach isn't working. Yeah. So it was like, I either go bust. How many people am I going to help if I go bust? None. Or I change my approach. And that was the, that was the turning point for me. It's like I had to understand how do people make buying decisions? Yeah. And that's what set me off on a path of understanding the influence, the psychology. I looked at American pitch speakers at the time because there wasn't any in the UK then. Now there's obviously hundreds of them at the time. There was nobody. So I looked at all of that and started then creating a presentation that worked. Because And I think this is the other side with sales. Sales especially, or the word sales and selling. People are very commonly adverse to the concept. Yeah. And I think part of it is they misunderstand that selling is serving. So my belief, very strong belief, is I can give away the farm and I want you to come on the journey with me because I can help you get that result easier, better, faster, or more guaranteed that you'll get the result. Yeah. So I know if they don't buy, then I can't help them on that journey. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's all a journey. So it's like you need to, here's the, the bit that's for free. Yeah. You invest some of your time, we form a relationship, and you get to decide, am I the right person for you or not? But I want you to come on the journey. And that's my belief around selling. Because if they don't come on the journey, what's going to happen? Well, they're either not going to take action or they're going to yeah. spend years trying to figure they're out They're going to try, trying to figure out themselves. They're going to go back to doing what they've always been doing. They'll wake up tomorrow morning, back in their old environment. I'm not there anymore. And they'll just fall back into the old patterns and then struggle along for however long until they finally decide something needs to change. But that's my belief around selling. Selling is serving. Yeah. yeah. But it's not picking up the phone and hammering it and hoping for the best. Oh, God, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is, but that's not selling. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think this, is a, I, I, this has been brilliant. It's really insightful, and I know people are going to love this because there's so much... I mean, I'm going to rewatch this, not for, for my questions, but for your answers, really. <laughs> yeah, um, but I, I really appreciate you coming on this. Uh, I appreciate you forgiving me for not being there last. Was oh, last I totally week? understand. It was a couple of weeks ago now, yeah. but yeah. yeah. Um, but Paul, thank you so much. And guys, if you're on LinkedIn or you see this video, I'm going to put Paul's contact details and everything underneath, in the comments, above, wherever it goes. <laughs> Uh, connect with him because even on social media, on LinkedIn and Facebook, you're sharing really valuable yeah. stuff yeah. Um, to help people on their journey. Totally, yeah. I mean, I, I'm sharing the benefit of my research experience. The thing about me is I will research something. I will seek people out who know more than me. 
but then I will go and do it first mm -hmm. and then share my experience. That makes sense. It's like, yeah. I'm not, a, oh, I've read this in a book. Let me share it with you. And, then, and there's value in that. But I'm more of a, I've read this in a book. I went and did it. And this is how I had to tweak it to make it work. Let me share that with you. That's, yeah. that's how I am. Yeah. Cool. So guys, thanks for watching and follow Paul, connect with him. And uh, we'll have some more of these uh, really, really soon. So uh, see you all soon. Thanks a lot.